than that. Uh, Ireland need to find a plan C if they want to reach a World Cup semi-final. It's um, the silhouette of Jacob Stockdale in the back. Um, as Tom Reddy, as Henry, Slay, Henry Slade scores England's fourth last uh, last week, and then um, ticket touting rampaging, uh, rampant. Sorry, rather than the Six Nations, four hundred nineteen thousand euros for sale on Via Gogo. That's a report from the Guardian this morning. Um, Keith Earl says he was hit late twice by Mara Toje, but doesn't want to linger on it. And then there's a story about Trevor Francis, um, the first million pound player to move when he moved to the Forest in '79. Was Trevor Francis a good player? I don't really remember him that much. Oh, little bit. Before my time, but I remember watching a little bit of him play. Yeah, fantastic player. Dribbler. Technical, technical qualities as well. Who, yeah. Like who, after him, who would you compare him to? Oh, uh, it was difficult because he was quite tall, Trevor, like six foot, because he used to live in a, I don't remember speaking to him, in a bit of a funny old character, Trevor, uh, to, be <laughs> to be honest with you. How so? <laughs> Yeah, a little bit kind of, I um, uh, didn't know him too well, to be honest with you, but the time that he played, he would have played, you know, football, rah, 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 you know, that he, he played that, For that era yeah. uh, uh, of football, but kind of quite well-spoken, uh, Trevor, you know, wouldn't have been one of them, I wouldn't have thought in the dressing room, rah, you know, that, yeah. in with the crowd, so I maybe stood aloof a little bit. Uh, from the crowd. Did he play abroad for a, a number of years, Trevor? I don't know, actually. He strikes me the type of player could have flourished on the, uh, on the continent. Um, so what, you're, you're saying that... He played in, he played in America. Maybe a, li- maybe a little, bit of the, little bit of the Eden, uh, Eden Hazards would have you know, physically oh, yeah? been a different type. Of, yeah. yeah, in terms of technical ability. Wow. And considering the type of pitches, as you know, they played on back, back then, back yeah. in the day, and in terms of how the game was played, in terms of tackling, etc. So he's a hard man on the pitch, but not so much off it? No. Is that what you're trying to well, say? Well, I wouldn't say I had... No, that's not, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. Owen. Have you been listening to what I've been saying at all? <laughs> but I said he was well-spoken. He yeah, was well that, that, That's he, what I mean, as in Eden like... Hazard. He was, <laughs> Where did the hard man come from? Well, no, I mean the rah-rah-rah the on the that pitch. was the era. The yeah. era. So yeah. he was kind of a, an anomaly in the era. A bit dainty. Right, okay. Trevor, Trevor, a little bit dainty. That, he would have been described. That, that, no, that fits the description perfectly. I'm trying now. to dig you out here. I'm trying to dig you out no, a little thank bit. you for that. Oh, he played for, he played for Atalanta for a season. And Sampdoria, he did play for Sampdoria, I forgot about that. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> Absolutely, just flourished over there actually, Sampdoria. Just Graham Souness f- would have uh, arrived on the scene as well. Did uh, Graham play with him? I say Graham as if obviously I'm on first, first name terms with Graham, like, but um, obviously not. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he went for Sampdoria. He did, yeah, so he played, won the cup with the same team as Souness. That was it. <laughs> first time that ever won a cup. Um, then he joined Atalanta. For 800 grand, so uh, they obviously thought he was worth some money. Solskjaer makes the case to be permanent Manchester United boss, and Quinn Rue set to start as Ringrose and Toner out of the Scotland clash. Um, Toner and Ringrose, not a great combination to be losing. Like the key for your defence at 13, and the man who calls your lineouts. So yeah, that's not great news for Ireland out of the Scotland game. Uh, we're not a bad team overnight. <coughs> Earls hits back at Ireland's critics, and Kieran Shannon's stuttering start. But 2019 can still be golden year for Ireland, and he makes a comparison with the years at year 2000. Year 2000, we got absolutely destroyed by England in the first game, 50 points to 18. So uh, that was under Warren Gatland. Uh, then what, 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 um, what happened in the Scotland game? Scotland game, we absolutely hammered Scotland then the second week out. There was a week break back then, beat them 44 points to 22, brings in a, a raft of changes. Uh, like new halfback pairing in in Raj and Stringer and uh, a number of other things that that are that are changed throughout that day and they play play a lot better and they win obviously okay. they go to Paris then after that and Brian O'Driscoll scores that try and then they lose uh, yeah and, and then they lose to Wales at home. How do you remember all that? Uh, that you say it, back, up, back in two thousand. You read it this morning in the paper. Oh, literally, I didn't read it this morning. <laughs> it's, off the, it's right off the top of my head. You were two. Right off the top of my head. I'm giving you too much credit, I'm giving you too much credit two, there, Al. It wasn't two in 2000. That's harsh, Jay. That's well, really well, hard. Like the ageism that goes on in the studio is disgusting. He knows his, he knows his rugby, Al. I'll give him that. He doesn't know his rugby. What age is he? Come on. It's five and a half. Okay, five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nichols banking on clan to blaze the trail. Uh, Paul Nichols yesterday outlined his hopes and dreams for securing an 11th trainer's title while also warning his rivals Clan des Oboe, the King George VI chase hero, and leading Magner's Cheltenham Gold Cup contender, Bulmers. Well, it was ready to join the select band of superstar chasers, so that's that. And then a top spot in sight for title favourites. Manchester City are now the shortest price of any team to win the league. They are odds on and Liverpool are slight odds against. Uh, I'm going to start with the Times Ireland edition this morning. Uh, we are putting our place, uh, admits Earls, on the back of the paper here this morning. They've also got 
that photograph of Paul Dragaman there and that uh, Niall Quinn story which we may touch back on a little bit later on Dare to Dream uh, We Can Improve so he's been uh, speaking over the last couple of days and he wants a figure north of 100 million euro over a five year period that's what he thinks is necessary to put his dream for Irish football uh, into reality just to touch on uh, one story on the inside of the paper uh, Matt Dickinson writing this morning in the Times at Stakes High Doctors Tribunal it'll be covered across most of the papers particularly in the UK this morning that is because uh, the Tribunal of Dr Richard Freeman begins in Manchester today so uh, he resigned from British Cycling 16 years ago he's alleged to have ordered testosterone in May 2011 so 30 sachets of testogel showed up uh, in his offices and he's got to prove that it wasn't for performance enhancing reasons. That tribunal starts today. It reminded us of uh, this image when his book arrives into the office last year. Of course, Dr. Richard Freeman is at the centre of the Jiffy Bag scandal and uh, the Jiffy Bag was what contained the line where sport and medicine, where medicine and sport collide uh, by Dr. Richard Freeman last year. Um, the back page of the Mirror this morning is ruthless. Guardiola urges his city stars to keep on banging in the goals in case their prem title defence goes to the wire. And it's the same story on the back of the star this morning. City won't crack. Pep turns up the title heat on nervy Liverpool. Now you've also got uh, an, an FA story here asking Klopp to explain ref views. So he's been asked by the Football Association to submit an explanation for his criticism of referee Kevin Friend after Monday's draw against West Ham. What did he uh, say? It was weak. Uh, I've got to be honest, it was really weak. Uh, Klopp said, we had good moments coming through the channels and scored the goal, which I've now been told this is offside. This explains a little bit the second half because he knew for sure at half-time, and then you saw a lot of strange situations. They were not decisive, but just rhythm breakers. That obviously didn't help us. Um, as a human being... The referee even ended up, because he gave him an offside goal. Yeah, yeah you gotta keep, he's got to just shut up and get, uh, get on with it, because it, it didn't come across uh, Gray very kind of negative-like, you know what I mean? The other story here in the back page is Sam a big fan of rice. So uh, I'm not sure Sam Allardyce stabbing Ireland in the back, you know, and uh, his counterparts. What's he doing? The, I can't understand. Like, surely he'd be like, go on, sign for Ireland, no? He hasn't committed for Ireland yet. England should play him quickly. Very, very quickly, says Sam Allardyce. So uh, screw you, Sam. Basically. Yeah, go, go back to your point of mind there, Sam. <laughs> uh, back to the RT <coughs> mail is Hazard closes in on £100 million Real deal. Uh, Kenny Cunningham shows his eyes to heaven not having this. No, 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 I just wish he'd get on and do it. I'm just sick of reading about it. Uh, back page of the Herald. He knows what he wants now. <sighs> so do we. Cup King Amund, Irish ace Podrick, is a toast of Newport again with goal to set up Dream City tie and move to get the dubs out of Croker. We were speaking about this a couple of weeks ago that Donegal had proposed a motion that no team can play their home game in the Super 8s <laughs> in Croke Park. That motion will go to Congress this month on February the 22nd. It is... Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see if that one does pass. It does need 60% to get through. I think this one is going to be one of the really tight ones. I mean, what, so it what's, the, yeah, what's the general consensus so there? Obviously, they don't want Dublin playing any of those games. You know what happened last year? Dublin ended up getting two games in Croker yeah. and everybody else got yeah. one game in Croker. Right. And everybody says, well, that's unfair because it's Dublin and they're in Croker and they're in Croker twice. Like, the, the rules are supposed to be there's a Croke Park game, uh, uh, an away game and a home game. And Dublin have a Croke Park game, a Croke Park game and an away game. If they changed the designation of the Croke Park game to a neutral game, everybody would have a neutral game, a home game, and a Croke Park game, except the team who plays Dublin. Now, Dublin aren't going to be allowed to have a home game in Croker, and uh, Dublin might end up having to play Mayo in Port Leash or Clonus or, I mean, Belfast, if they build that stadium at some point, or Cork or it's a, Killarney. It's a, it depends, it depends. If Mayo win the Connacht Championship, it's not going to be against Mayo. So it's Whoever, whoever. Yeah, for me, the way I look at it, there's every chance. They haven't deciphered the fixtures yet. In Dublin Super 8 group, it's going to be Dublin, the Connacht winners, and the Munster runners-up and the Ulster runners-up are the team that beats them. So there is a situation where Dublin could have to play a Tyrone, a Donegal, or a Monaghan at home, but they're not allowed to play it in Croke Park. So suddenly, it could be Dublin against one, another Division 1 team in Parnell Park. It couldn't be, though, It surely. couldn't be. Surely not. So therefore, Dublin would then have to play a home game outside of their own county which just seems ridiculous. The idea should have been that they can't play a neutral game in Croke Park because let's face up here and let's address the elephant in the room. Croke Park is Dublin's home ground. It is one of their home grounds. People can have two home grounds. Kerry have got two of them. Dublin have got two of them. Parnell Park and Croke Park. If we face up to this idea and just not allow Dublin to play their neutral game in Croke Park, this situation will be avoided. But there seems to be a fear of actually mentioning Dublin in this motion and Donegal have not mentioned Dublin in this motion. To be fair, that might actually help the motion to pass. So, <laughs> if, if it does get through, it's going, it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, uh, just one final newspaper for me this morning. It's the back of the sun. Here we go again. Here we go again, I should say. Pep looking on the plus side. They're up against Everton tonight, and uh, they'll go top of the table temporarily. They 
Quick one here, sorry. The um, front of the star, the back of the star, City Won't Crack. Um, uh, it will be Regency Part 2. Uh, events with top MTK boxer Tyson scrapped threat of attacks over Kinahan Link. This is the story that um, they have. Anti-Kinahan threats before boxing events. So Tyson Fury was due to speak at the Helix and also um, at an event in Cork, but both events have now been cancelled following um, anti-Kinahan graffiti. Um, the Tyson Fury event has been cancelled in Dublin and Cork. A mechanism for refunds has been put in place. Details are online. There was minor criminal damage to the Helix, which has been referred to in Garda Síochána. So this graffiti actually happened at the Helix in uh, DCU. So um, I'm sure you'll hear a bit more about that across the day. Now